Sea trials, which are currently underway, we, uh, we are on a constant rotation at the moment of taking the ship out, sometimes for a day, sometimes overnight, sometimes for three days. It's a very important part of uh, the development of the ship and, and in the ship's life. It's an opportunity for the shipyard to test the ship, basically uh, put it through its paces, test all of, the, uh, all of the, the design features, test all of the technological developments that we've built in, make sure that everything is working as it should. So it's a very important part in, in the process of finishing the ship by the shipyard and handing it over to Quark Expeditions to, uh, to become ship owners. A couple of the key milestones of the sea trials, we, uh, we have to have a formal measurement of the ship's speed. So in our shipbuilding contract, we uh, required the ship to reach a speed of 16 knots. So there is a measured distance over which we, we test that. So we run the ship up to, to full speed with all systems operating. And we carefully watch all of the dials uh, and the displays and the outputs to, uh, to see what the maximum speed of the ship is, is actually achieved. So, and I'm really pleased to say on this occasion, we not only met the speed, the design speed, but we exceeded it by, by a short margin as well. We also have a dynamic positioning system, um, which will help keep the, the ship um, stable and in one place. Uh, in case the weather does turn a little nasty, we can always get people back safely by creating a lee with the ship. Um, press of a button and the ship will stay in exactly the same place while we uh, recover the boats or indeed launch the boats. Clearly there's a lot of pressure, uh, there's a lot of pressure on the shipyard um, to obviously uh, prove that the ship um, is going to deliver against its design criteria so we need to make sure that it goes as fast as we specified, we need to make sure that it consumes uh, fuel that we specified, obviously as, as low as possible. So yeah there's a lot of pressure particularly on the shipyard team, there's a lot of pressure on the Quark team because multiple tests take place at once. The project came about, as I say, in late in 2015 when Quark Expeditions decided that um, they wanted to uh, buy their own vessel um, so that we can take advantage of, uh, of the fact that owning a vessel brings all manner of financial advantages, but also primarily that we could design a vessel which was specifically for expeditions and specifically for expeditions in the polar regions. Up until that time, we'd been operating vessels which were perfectly suitable but were actually converted from a, a, another purpose. So um, creating the design and building Ultramarine was our opportunity to create a, a very specialised and bespoke expedition vessel primarily and solely for the polar regions. The, uh, the standout features which set uh, Ultramarine apart from, from other vessels operating in the polar regions are the fact that we have two twin-engined helicopters and two helidecks that we can operate from. So that means we can get people off the vessel and into the air or onto the land for heli-based activities very quickly. Perhaps in the background you can see our Zodiac hangar door is open. Um, all of our 20 Zodiacs will be stored inside the vessel, which is a unique uh, facility. Uh, most of the vessels have them outside on, on a high deck. This means that not only are the Zodiacs uh, going to be well looked after, they're out of the sunlight, they're out of the weather. Primarily though, the advantage is we, we can deploy the Zodiacs very, very quickly onto the water and we anticipate having all 20 boats and all 200 passengers on the water in perhaps less than 20 minutes. There's lots of other features of Ultramarine. It's got a very high ice glass. It's uh, been equipped uh, and kitted out from an interior perspective with a high degree of comfort and a high degree of passenger experience. We've got a fabulous sauna and uh, gym and uh, spa facility. We have two dining rooms. We have the ability to dine outside. We have a range of cabins uh, with balconies. And then from a technological point of view, there's a whole raft of features which make uh, Ultramarine not only safe, but very efficient uh, for our operations in, in the polar regions. On the sustainability front, we have a lot of innovative equipment on here, such as a, rather than incinerators, which are known to put out pollutants, we have a, a very modern gasifier. It's a, uh, it's a modern system which en enables us to burn any of the combustibles down to uh, zero emissions and um, very few particulates left over after it's done. We also have uh, a waste heat recovery system. So uh, using engine waste heat, we are able to use that to heat our water and air on board. And our sewage treatment plant is state of the art. So it's able to be used uh, in the ocean without putting out any kind of pollutants. It's uh, just clean water that comes out the environmentally friendly engines, the low emission engines, they're called tier three engines. Uh, so it's low emissions and with four of them of too large or too small, we're able to uh, change the configuration so that we get the most efficient combination for whatever we're trying to accomplish at that time. Quark Expedition's experience in the polar regions extends back to 1991 when the company was first started. 
um, with icebreaker operations in uh, in the north in in uh, in the Arctic. Uh, since then, we've uh, we've operated exclusively in the polar regions. Ultramarine, from an expedition perspective, will be in the hands of uh, one of the most experienced uh, expedition teams in the industry. It's the expedition team that really bring the expedition experience to life, and uh, so we now have a perfect combination of a specially tailor-made, bespoke design ship for expedition operations in the polar regions, and it will be in the hands of uh, the most experienced expedition team in the industry.